Hey guys, as always, thanks for stopping by. So tyranny has reared its head in Kentucky. Let's talk about that. Today's episode is brought to you by all of you patriots. Y'all know the drill. Every thumbs up is a huge help. Had a lot of fun over the weekend from Friday's video talking about a traitor to the Second Amendment. You guys crushed those thumbs up, but we also had some great conversations over the weekend down below. So thanks for everything right down below and really for everything. It's a lot of fun doing this channel. A bunch of y'all hit me over the weekend to say, hey, I kept talking about a gun lobbyist. It was actually an anti-gun lobbyist. Y'all got it. Y'all got it 100% right. I misspoke, but it was a lot of fun talking to y'all. So I will go through a pandemic any day with you patriots. And speaking of pandemic, that's what we're talking about a little bit today. I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on, and then I have a question for you at the end. So stick around. I do want to hear your opinion. This channel, in a lot of ways, is about freedom. It's a two-way channel, absolutely is. The foundation of everything I do here centers around and filters through the Second Amendment, but it's really about freedom, the Constitution, our freedoms, and how we interact in this current climate and culture. And in a lot of ways, the Second Amendment is all about preventing of tyranny. And I believe, and I'm not an alarmist, y'all know that, if anything, Y'all fuss at me, A, for having dust in my face, but also for being a little bit in the middle because I do like looking at both sides. It makes y'all angry sometimes, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with looking at different sides and walking through things. I'm not an alarmist, but this case that I'm about to go over right now is absolutely, in my opinion, at least about what we know right now as of today, is clear tyranny in Hardin County, Kentucky. Let me tell you about it. So you have this young couple named Elizabeth and Isaiah Linscott, and we're gonna get into a lot of issues here with the <clears throat> you know what, but they were getting ready to take a trip. A lot of folks before they travel, especially if they're gonna be hanging around with people that may be a little bit older, they wanna go get tested. So this young lady, Elizabeth Linscott in Hardin County, Kentucky, she went and did a voluntary test on herself before she drove to Michigan to see her family. And it turns out she came back <coughs> positive. Now she had no symptoms, was, was asymptomatic, voluntary test. And so they decided, and they've said this repeatedly, they have no problem with the self-quarantine, but then they received a phone call from the health department in Hardin County. And the health department said this, we need you to sign this paperwork to, to say, hey, you are gonna be doing a self-quarantine. And when Elizabeth Linscott read the piece of paper, there was one phrase that she decided for herself not to sign the paper. Again, they have no problem with a self-quarantine. Nobody here is saying, hey, let's go out and infect the world. Nobody's saying that. Here's the sentence, and I'll put it up right here as well. This is one sentence from that document that they wanted her to sign, they being the health department of Hardin County. This is it verbatim. I will not travel by any public, commercial, or health care conveyance, such as ambulance, bus, taxi, airplane, train, or boat, without the prior approval of the Department of Health. That's a tough statement. Before, if they were to have an emergency and before they could call 911 and they have a little one in their house, before they can get their kid in an ambulance and get them to the hospital, they've got to go ask the Department of Health and they would be held liable if they didn't. That is not something that you need to sign. Not at all, not remotely something you need to sign. I respect her right not to sign that. Again, third time I'm going to say it, and she has said that, she being Elizabeth Linscott, repeatedly they have no problem with the self-quarantine, not at all, but she decided that she is not. And so my opinion is, thumbs up for her for looking out for their family. So this came out over the weekend. They, a knock comes on the door. Her husband, Isaiah Linscott, opens the door. His words were, there were eight people, five vehicles, a man in a suit from the health department with a mask, and they were with the sheriff's department as well, and they now have ankle bracelets on the family. Elizabeth and, and Isaiah are now wearing ankle bracelets, and they can't leave their house without those ankle bracelets going on and alerting the authorities. All because they refused to sign a piece of paper saying, hey, I'm going to choose if I want to, to get on, if I need to, I'm going to get on an ambulance and go to the hospital. And that was her, the sticking point for Elizabeth, for her and her child. Now, let me go through a couple points here, and that's all that we know about the story as of right now. I know there's always more things that come out down the road, but I've looked at this on multiple 
different websites, multiple different uh, mainstream media sources, and that's everything I've read. It's a pretty short story. I know that if you're seeing this a month from now, we may know more about it, but it seems pretty cut and dry. Ankle bracelets, no crimes committed at all, now being monitored by the government. Let me go through a couple points. I want to hear what you have to say about this. First question that I wrote down when I went through my notes today is, how far does the government go? Like, how far can they reach into our lives? My children, before they were able to even go to school, had to buy an edict from our government, get chemicals, and I, chemicals is something, I know water is a chemical, I get that, but they had to get vaccines put into their bloodstream and into their bodies because our government said so. What is the end of their overreach? I don't think there is, is any. I don't think the government has any plans on stopping. How far? How far are they willing to go? And then also, the next question I have in this, how far are we willing to allow them to go? As of right now, the data is in <coughs> conclusive on all of this stuff. And we know from Texas and Florida clearly that the books are being cooked. We know what's going on in New York. We know in multiple different states there's all sorts of nonsense going on. The data is incomplete. The books are being cooked. There is some credible evidence of tests <coughs> that are 100% positive as well as tests that are already pre-positive. If you take the test when it comes in the package and then test it, it's already positive. There's several reports of that. I'm a little bit of a conspiracist on this one. I am on some level but I don't trust the government, not at any level, including the Health Department of Hardin County, Kentucky, and the Health Department right here. How far is the government going to go? How far are we going to allow the government? Also comes into a little bit of backdoor control. I mentioned my kids having to have things put in their bodies before they go to school. Well, that's a, that's, and that's coming in this situation <coughs> right now. Right now, Big Pharma is gearing up. It's going to be a lot of bazillions of dollars made in the coming months over this vaccine that is coming and probably will be mandated before it's ever received full testing. I don't believe any of it. A little bit of a tinfoil hat. However, watch what they attach to this. You can't do, they're going to make a box. If you don't get this put into you, you can't do anything in this box. Maybe go back to school, maybe travel, maybe go from state to state, and they will control the population based on that one thing that has nothing to do with travel or school or education. Yeah, you can't go learn to read and write as a child, or you can't go to college. You can't do this if you don't get this. And they will attach one thing to another that have nothing to do with each other. Yes, I know there are some concerns of public safety. Yes, if there was a boatload of people, of refugees that came in with the plague, I would want the government to step in and to shut that down. I'm not 100% against that. I am 100% against it when the data is inconclusive and if anything, controversial. Controversial at best. Let's take this to the Second Amendment. This is what they do with gun control, and they will attach one box with another. Oh, you can't do this unless you do that. Or they will attach all sorts of nonsense with these other laws. I'm not going to go into that today, but this is why we pay attention to the tyranny that is right under our noses. I think it's a mess in Hardin County, but I do think this, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm thankful a little bit for the media in this one, because the media's done a pretty good job, at least over the last several days and over the weekend, of getting the word out on this one. So far, so good. Yeah, they'll mess it up eventually, but I am glad that's why we have social media, new media, as well as traditional media. Gives me an eye twitch just saying that. Question for you. What do you think? Where are you at in all this? I don't want the plague running rampant through our society. Not remotely. I'm all for health. I'm all for health departments. I'm glad that the water in that sink right over there is clean. I'm glad that I can drink it. We have potable water right here in this facility, and I think that's fantastic. And there's a government agency that monitors that. And on some level, I'm glad. And don't start that fluoride stuff. Don't start it. Let me know down below what you think. Would love to hear your opinion on that one. And yep, I made a big deal last week over Canic. And here's one right here. This one came in Friday. I'm testing this for Pew Pew Tactical. I had a great time with it last night. I'll have that over on Pew Pew Tactical later this week. But yeah, after I ran my big yapper last week, now I'm sitting here holding this one. Yeah, it's, it's what I do. But to anyone that's against our freedoms, against the Constitution of the United States, against the things that we hold and love and the very fabric of our society, to anyone that's willing to monitor nice young families who are trying to live their lives as 
peaceable Americans, and yet are now treated like criminals by the tyranny of the government. To all of those folks, yep, from my cold, dead hands. Bye.